Welcome to Movie Mash. Our channel offers fun and insightful movies that will surely entertain you. Please don't forget to subscribe for more interesting movie recaps. We're about to start so sit back, relax, and let's dive in. The story revolves around Don and Alice Harris, a couple who, along with other survivors, are hiding in a countryside cottage. Alice is concerned about their children, who were on a school trip abroad when the outbreak occurred. The couple dines with Sally, Jacob, Aaron, and Jeff. The group is interrupted by a knocking on the door, and despite objections, Alice insists on letting in a little boy who is calling for help. As the others tend to the boy, Karen sneaks a glance outside, hoping to see her missing boyfriend. Suddenly, an infected person grabs her arm and bites her. Jacob tries to intervene, but Karen attacks him. Don uses a crowbar to hit Karen's head and free Jacob. While the survivors run for safety, Don stays back to fight the infected. However, more infected people break into the cottage through the windows, while Jeff, Sally, and Jacob escape to the barn, where Jeff holds the door open for the others to enter. Don manages to kill one infected but loses his crowbar in the process. He rushes upstairs to find Alice. At the barn, the infected break through the door and overpower Jeff, leaving Sally frozen in grief. Jacob attempts to pull her to safety on the second floor but an infected person grabs Sally, and Jacob shuts the trapdoor, unable to save her. Don finds Alice in the bedroom but she refuses to leave without the boy. After finally finding the boy hiding in the closet, they are interrupted by an infected man breaking down the door, separating Alice and Don. Don climbs out of the window and runs away. From a distance, Don watches as Alice is overwhelmed by the infected. Don sprints towards the river with a horde of infected in pursuit. Upon reaching the dock where Jacob is preparing a boat, Don manages to get in, but Jacob falls into the water. Don tries to save him, but the infected pull Jacob under. Jacob resurfaces, now infected, and Don is forced to kick him off the boat and escape alone. Grief-stricken and fearful, Don looks back at the window where he last saw his wife. 28 weeks after the outbreak, an American-led NATO force assists in Britain's repatriation efforts once all the infected have died from starvation. Sergeant Doyle, a sniper from the US military, watches the area while joking around with his friend, a helicopter pilot named Flynn. After a plane lands at the airport, carrying Britons who had escaped an outbreak, Major Scarlett Levy, a medical officer, observes the new arrivals and is distressed to see that there are children among them. Tammy and Andy are among the newcomers, and Scarlett conducts Andy's medical assessment, taking note of his heterochromatic eyes, which he inherited from his mother. District 1, the initial secure quarantine zone after the outbreak, is where Tammy and Andy are sent. Upon arriving there, they happily reunite with their father, Don. In the meantime, Scarlett expresses to her superiors that they are not ready to admit minors. General Stone assures her that the virus will not return, and even if it does, they can manage it. Upon returning to District 1, Don takes his children on a tour of the area. Don's position as a caretaker of the district provides his family with a comfortable penthouse, but they will be relocated to a new house within a few months due to security concerns in their old neighborhood. Andy inquires about their mother, to which Don falsely claims to have found Alice in a critical condition and was unable to save her. That night, Doyle sets up his sniper rifle to keep an eye on the residents of District 1. As he observes through his scope, he is pleased to see the Harris family reunited and notices Scarlett looking worried in her room. Later, Andy has a nightmare where he sees his infected mother, leading him to worry that he will forget what she looks like. The following day, Tammy and Andy leave the safety of the quarantine zone without permission. Doyle notices them and alerts the authorities to retrieve the children. Tammy and Andy run freely through the streets, reveling in their newfound freedom. They come across a pizza restaurant and spot a motorbike outside. Believing that it will expedite their journey, Tammy takes the key from a lifeless body and drives them to their old home. At their old house, they retrieve Alice's photo and personal belongings from their bedrooms. As Andy enters the attic, he discovers bowls of decaying food and drawings on the walls. Suddenly, he spots a figure in the shadows and approaches it. It is his mother, Alice, whom he embraces. However, Alice tightly embraces him back. Outside, soldiers arrive at the house, prompting Andy and Tammy to escape. The soldiers investigate the house while Alice is taken to District 1 for decontamination. Soldiers surround Alice as she lies on a bed, unresponsive to Scarlett's inquiries about how she survived on her own. Scarlett rolls up Alice's sleeve to take a blood sample and observes a bite mark on Alice's arm. Don is surprised to learn that both his wife and children have been located. When Don visits his children in the detention room, Tammy demands the truth about Alice. Don claims to be unsure about what happened to Alice but reassures his children that she is alive. 
Scarlet confirms that Alice is a carrier of the virus but has no symptoms, suggesting that she may have natural immunity to it. Despite Scarlet's insistence that studying Alice could lead to a cure, General Stone decides to execute her. Meanwhile, Don apologizes to Alice for abandoning her in the cottage, and they share a tearful kiss. Unfortunately, Don becomes infected with the virus after the kiss and starts exhibiting symptoms. Alice watches helplessly as Don struggles and vomits blood in front of her. Alice struggles to break free from her restraints, but despite her frantic efforts, she remains trapped. Unfortunately, Don, who is already infected, savagely kills her. Don then proceeds to infect the soldiers he encounters, and General Stone witnesses the chaos. Consequently, he issues a code red to isolate the outbreak. The soldiers seal off District 1 and lock Tammy and Andy in a detention room, but Scarlet rescues them after shooting an infected soldier. Meanwhile, the other residents are being moved to a secure location, but Tammy and Andy fail to get top priority security. In the chaos that ensues, Andy gets separated from Tammy and Scarlet. Andy finds a quiet spot to rest, and the power goes out, leaving the residents in darkness and fear. Andy and another man notice the fire exit door shaking, and they investigate it. They are stunned to see Don, who is now infected, banging on the door. Don attacks the man with the flashlight, causing chaos as more people become infected. Andy climbs over people and cars to escape through a vent. Eventually, a group of people manages to force the locked doors open, and the infected spill out of the building. The soldiers try to shoot the infected, but the situation is chaotic, and it becomes difficult to distinguish between the infected and uninfected. Scarlet and Tammy manage to escape the building, and General Stone orders the shooting of all targets, regardless of whether they are infected or not. Scarlet finds a radio and asks the military to find and rescue Andy. Meanwhile, Doyle receives orders to shoot everyone on the ground and is unsure if he can bring himself to harm innocent people. The snipers continue to shoot indiscriminately, causing more chaos and panic. However, Andy hears someone calling out to him and sees Sam beckoning him towards a nearby warehouse. As an infected man approaches him, Doyle saves Andy and allows him to escape. Unfortunately, one of the snipers gets cornered by the infected, prompting Doyle to shoot his comrade to spare him from the infection. Doyle is overwhelmed by guilt and can no longer bear to kill innocent people. Inside the warehouse, Andy reunites with Scarlet and Tammy, who are relieved to see him safe. However, Andy breaks the heartbreaking news to Tammy that their father is infected. Doyle questions why the military is targeting everyone and Scarlet explains that they must exterminate everyone if they cannot contain the outbreak. With Doyle's help, Scarlet, Tammy, Andy, and a few others leave the warehouse and try to find a way to safety. Flynn informs Doyle that the Air Cavalry has been ordered to bomb District 1 in order to contain the outbreak. He arranges to meet Doyle at Regent Park. As the group runs through the streets, a sniper opens fire, causing them to take cover in an alley. Scarlet is wounded in the leg but manages to bandage herself up. Doyle observes that the sniper is becoming more panicked and less accurate, and asks Sam to help him locate the sniper. However, Sam is too afraid to assist. Andy bravely uses himself as bait, allowing Doyle to fire at the sniper and neutralize the threat. The group climbs over the perimeter walls and seeks safety in a tunnel as they watch the Air Cavalry bomb District 1, resulting in the deaths of both infected and uninfected individuals. Soldiers in the control room watch the devastation unfold. Don avoids the fire by taking cover behind a wall, as he sadly watches a photograph of his wife and son burning in front of him. Doyle observes the flames as they reach the tunnel, and quickly flees with others before it detonates. Stone receives updates about the firebomb attacks and views footage revealing that a small group of infected individuals managed to survive and are now destroying barricades. After spending the night in Regent Park, the remaining survivors rest. Andy expresses concern about their mother's survival, but Tammy is doubtful. Doyle confesses to Scarlet that he intended to target Andy, but couldn't bring himself to do it, so he abandoned his post. Scarlet discloses that Andy and Tammy's mother was immune to the rage virus, and she suspects that the siblings may carry the same immunity gene. Flynn radios Doyle to warn him that the infected are in close proximity. Doyle instructs everyone to hide in the grass. When a helicopter arrives, Doyle insists on evacuating the children by crossing the channel, but Flynn refuses to do so. Sam, seeing the infected approaching, panics and clings onto the helicopter's skid, imploring Flynn to take him away. In a moment of confusion, Flynn flies the helicopter closer to the infected and aims the rotor blades downward, slicing them. Flynn flies the helicopter away, advising Doyle to head to the stadium, while escaping, Andy falls, prompting Doyle to turn around and shoot the infected, saving the boy. Despite being pursued by additional infected people, the group manages to flee. 
However, their escape is halted when nerve gas is dispersed at the end of the road. The group gets into a van and closes the vents, shielding their faces. The infected pound on the windows until the gas eventually kills them. In the meantime, Doyle observes soldiers using flamethrowers to incinerate the infected. He advises Scarlet to take the children to the stadium alone, then exits the car. In a dimly lit area, she uses the rifle's night vision to guide the siblings. Tammy and Andy make their way down a set of escalators, Scarlet locates Tammy by following her voice, but Don suddenly appears and attacks her, taking the rifle and striking her on the head. When the commotion settles, Tammy comes across the rifle and peers through the scope, discovering Scarlet's lifeless body. Meanwhile, at the platform, Andy searches for the rest of the group but encounters Don instead. Don pounces on Andy, sinking his teeth into his neck, leaving him frozen in shock. Tammy appears and Don rushes towards her. Seeing no trace of her father in Don, Tammy shoots him in self-defense, tears streaming down her face. Tammy rushes to her brother, fearing he may also turn. Andy, feeling unwell, flees but collapses on the tracks Tammy follows him and helps him up, observing his left eye turning bloodshot, confirming his immunity. They arrive at the stadium, where Flynn awaits them with a gun, inquiring about Doyle's whereabouts. Tammy conceals her brother and claims that it's just the two of them. Eventually, Flynn agrees to help them, and they fly across the English Channel. Tammy and Andy witness the aftermath of the epidemic. 28 days later, the helicopter is abandoned, and a pack of infected creatures pour into the city of Paris through a tunnel. Thank you for watching, don't forget to subscribe for more interesting recaps.